These pictures tell a story of a massacre. It happened in November 1991 in the capital of East Timor. Around the world, it became known as the Dili Massacre. But this is a story about what happened after the cameras stopped. It is the story of a long investigation to discover the sequel to the Dili Massacre. An investigation by the man who took these pictures. British journalist Max Stahl. In the wake of the, of the killings, many international governments, including the Australian government, asked the Indonesians to account for the missing. They have not done this. They have not even begun to do it. They have not given a single family the remains of their loved ones. On this list are the names of 521 people who have not been seen since the day of the Dili massacre. Among them people who Stahl had actually filmed that day. I decided to go back to East Timor, secretly, obviously, because I was on a list, in order to investigate what might have happened to these people. Inside East Timor, I followed the history of some of these people. I followed their case histories, what happened to them, from the moment where I'd filmed them and where I had visual evidence of them. And of these, a number of cases stood out very graphically. Most particularly, there is a case of a school teacher that I, have, uh, that I had sat right next to me. He was one of a number of people who uh, had disappeared. He had three children. They now have no means of support. He was well known in the community. For obvious reasons, not only related to his wound, there's absolutely no way he could have disappeared. He doesn't run away in East Timor. It's a small country. People don't disappear there. And in this case, physically, he was unable to disappear, aside from the fact that the entire cemetery was surrounded and nobody could have disappeared. Stahl discovered that the military had been very methodical that day. This man was not shot. He was stabbed five times. There were many more like him. After the shooting, they searched me. They found I wasn't wounded. They told me to stand up, and they stabbed me. After the shooting, they searched me and did not find any wound. They started to beat me until I lost consciousness. Then they loaded me onto the truck with the dead. At the hospital, I saw them dump bodies like animals, and a few were still alive. The order was given to run the trucks over them. Two of these witnesses, Aviano Faria and Joao Diaz, were smuggled out of East Timor to Portugal, where they could present their evidence in public. Aviano survived by pretending he was dead. The dead were piled as high like a ton of sand in the morgue. And some were still alive. They were still alive and they moved. Then two soldiers came into the morgue. One had in his hands a huge stone. How big? As big as this. And the other had in his hands a like pot of pills. Joao was an orderly at the military hospital. He described what he had seen at the hospital that day. They no longer had the courage to inject them with sulfuric acid. 
because they did not want to listen to the people screaming. So they gave them a handful of these pills. Around 10 or 15 minutes later, the people began to gasp for breath. How did they breathe? This breathing was first like this. After that, it began to go down. The one who had that stone in his hands checked the bodies and moved them. And if they were still alive, he threw stone on their head. If they were still alive, he threw it again. Then, when I saw them hit my friend lying next to me, I suddenly stood up and I lied. I said, look, wait, I beg your pardon. Please don't hit me because I'm an informer. Stahl smuggled the pills that had been given to the demonstrators out of East Timor. We took these to uh, the police, Forensic Science Laboratory in London, and they produced the result. These were 600 milligrams, that's to say, pure formaldehyde. This is a form of extremely powerful disinfectant. A few of these pills will fumigate an entire hospital ward, killing everything in it. In other words, equivalent to feeding somebody a kind of liquid floor cleaner. In East Timor, the families of those who disappeared at the military hospital have been told nothing. So their response to him. All they said was that he was not in the hospital. The whole family is now threatened and watched by the Indonesian agents. That's what they told me the first week, that my husband was wounded. And the hospital denied he was there? The military said he wasn't there. Who said he was there? The Timorese working at the hospital said he was there. So when you completed your investigations, what did you conclude had happened to Jacinto and the other cases you looked into? Well, it seems clear that what took place that day with many people, I don't know how many, is that they were arrested in the cemetery, wounded when they were arrested, taken to the military hospital, and instead of being treated in a military hospital, they were killed there. In March this year, the witnesses Joao and Aviano presented their evidence to the UN Human Rights Commission in Geneva. I can't say for sure how many people died, but I can calculate it must have been more than 300. Because at that moment, the people were dying like we could hardly see the floor with the people piled up like cartload of wood or sand. Following this, the United Nations decided to investigate the aftermath of the Dili massacre. But for Stahl, this was not the end of the story. Well, Indonesia and indeed a number of other foreign governments have been suggesting that this was an incident that could be, as it were, put into the past and that now uh, we should uh, get on with the future. I think it's important for people to understand what the impact of something like this is on a people. Since the massacre and the capture of the guerrilla leader, Shinana Guzmao, in 1992, Indonesia has claimed that the resistance in East Timor is finished. Stahl found this was far from the truth. I took these pictures with a hidden camera in a bag. It was about six in the morning in the eastern part of East Timor. 
in an area where there was a very large uh, Indonesian military operation going on at that time to clean up the guerrillas. The soldiers are Timorese, but the officers Indonesian. And uh, this is 19 years after the occupation. You have a typical colonial situation there. And yet, about a kilometre away from there, right in the middle of this operation, I met members of A Company, Zone 2, of the East Timorese Resistance Army. These guys are right on the guerrilla front line. But the headquarters of the guerrilla army is up in the mountains. And that's where I met the leader, Connie Santana. Over 19 years of guerrilla war against Indonesia, only two Western journalists have met with the guerrilla leadership. Stahl was to be one of them. He met the new guerrilla leader, Connie Santana. Nas zonas de das operações mais frequentes do inimigo, estamos a oito horas, oito horas de via de, de viagem hum, até lá. Ah, ok. A pé sim. Mas em helicóptero? Ah, em helicóptero é questão de é questão de minutos. Gente. Santana took command of the guerrillas after the capture of their former leader, Shanana Guzmão, in November 1992. Shanana Guzmão foi o sábio, o estratega, o ideólogo, a do povo timorense na luta. Antes, pelo contrário, a captura de Xanana Guzmão motivou a todos os timorenses, hoje, em todo o Timor-Leste, o nosso povo está de pé. Since the Delhi massacre, the number of guerrillas has actually increased in contrast to what uh, Indonesia has said, and it's because survivors like these people here have gone up to the mountains. They've all lost relatives and friends, and for them, the pursuit of independence represents basic dignity. Estamos estamos num número entre entre 600 a 800 homens com uma potencialidade muito superior para um recompletamento ainda maior a a 1500 homens sem sem grandes dificuldades. In the mountains, the guerrillas claim effective control. Em operações de envergadura, em determinado período de tempo, a Indonésia controla esta 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 ou aquela faixa concreta onde opera. Após a opera, após isso, os guerrilheiros têm voltam a ter o controle desta mesma desta desta mesma área. Stahl arranged to spend time with the guerrillas on the front line. These guerrillas were under orders from Santana not to engage the Indonesians. Their job is to organize the work of the clandestine front, the non-combatant resistance forces who operate secretly in the towns and villages of East Timor. Through the clandestine front, the guerrillas aim to deny Indonesia political control over East Timor. But today, the front is in charge of getting Stahl safely out of guerrilla hands. Ninguém saberá que nós estamos aqui, mas certo, 
Sí, en mi caso. Y contamos para que si alguien se topara, uh, topara a nosotros, y como es que la posición del Señor, y como es que la vuestra posición, la, uh, la vuestra posición. Yo no puedo, no puedo uh, identificar a él, ¿eh? Sí. Es que no con eso. que la mayor manera de tratar de asegurar de que él es la mejor para mi mamá. Well, it was hypothetical. I, I wasn't caught, and, and nor were they, and uh, I, nor have they been since. Uh, however, this is a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, the Indonesians are uh, completely ruthless. Uh, they have shown that in the massacre of Dili that we've all seen on television, uh, but they have also uh, shown it and continue to show it in uh, daily actions as an occupying force in East Timor. Star found that almost three years after the Dili massacre, East Timor is still waiting to bury its dead. And while it waits, opposition to the Indonesian government grows stronger than ever. Thank you.